This video is brought to you by Rhino Shield. So I've received hundreds of comments on my last video asking me to show you how my ultimate home screen setup was put together. So instead of showcasing the updated version of it, I will build it from scratch, step by step, taking you along with me. If you are familiar with the concept and you want to step right into creating it, use the timestamp below. Since the release of iOS 17 and the iPhone 15 Pro specifically, I had to revise and optimize my iPhone to retain its title, the ultimate home screen setup. If you're new here, the idea behind my ultimate home screen episodes has always been to condense all the tools and apps that I use into one setup or one homepage, which eliminates the need to search through endless amounts of pages and lists of apps while giving me quick access to pretty much everything I need. The benefits of such a setup are plenty. First of all, it works great on both smaller and larger iPhones, where on larger devices it allows for easy access and reachability having pushed most use apps and folders further down the screen for one-handed use. Furthermore, this setup saves time, reduces stress, and speeds up frequently executed apps. For example, if I were to do a quick timing experiment between my iPhone and what other people might use on a daily basis, things would look something like this. I start by opening my IKEA blinds to let some light into the studio. Then I play music which I broadcast to the studio HomePod. And finally, I see I have received a package for which I need to scan the receipt. As you can see, the difference between my setup and the average is worth implementing the principles I will show you in this video. Last but not least, this home screen setup helps me stay on top of my notifications by just glancing and not worrying I might have missed an important communication. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? So the prerequisites are as follows. I will use widgets and stacks of widgets for the most part. An integral app for me is Widget Widget, which I use to build my own widgets, which I'll talk more about in a bit. The next important app for this setup is Shortcuts, which is part of the iPhone, where we built two bespoke shortcuts from scratch. Some features require iOS 17, but for the most part, this setup should work great on pretty much all iPhones. I will be going over the action button and how I use it, but for those of you who don't have an iPhone with an action button, I'll be sure to showcase an alternative method to utilize such functionality once we get there. So, a really quick overview of the setup before we start. I have one home page. That's it. On the left, I have my widgets page, and on the right, I have the app drawer, which I can't really get rid of. I've removed the spotlight search from the home page to keep, you know, things looking clean and I've optimized the control center to my liking. Few things I care about in control center are no home app icons, the ability to switch between light and dark mode, background sounds, screen recording, and Shazam. The widgets page consists of the following sections. On the top left, I have my stats stack, which gives me info about my activities, battery life of my devices, and sleep. Note that all stacks have widget suggestions turned off while keeping the smart rotate on. It has grown on me. Next to it, I have a calendar stack with a month view and day view. Below it, I have my Hey Email widget, which helps me glance at my recent emails. Underneath, I have my Tick Tick To Do widget, and on the very bottom, I have four listening widgets stacked on top of each other. Pocket Casts, YouTube Music, Audible, and my most recent discovery, Endo. It's a very cool app that helps you focus. On the homepage, I have a large widget widget, which is mega powerful and I'll talk about it. And below it, I have the best calculator widget, which is called Calcul. On the bottom left, I have a stack of Notion page widgets. And on the right, I have my most used apps that are not part of any widget. An important folder, which I've showcased before, is my notification folder, which contains apps such as social media apps and others. The reason of which I keep there solely to glance if there's a red bubble I should pay attention to. If you're interested to learn more about, you know, the intricacies of this setup, I'll leave a link to my previous setup at the end of this video. Now let's start putting this setup together. First things first, I'm getting rid of all apps from the home screen and the widgets page. I would always start with a clean slate, plus it would be easier for you to follow. Before we get any further, I can't live with a default wallpaper. I will pick up and install a wallpaper from my Paintbrush Madness collection, which 
plenty of you rave about and I'm super happy. By the way, I have a Black Friday discount on my store, so feel free to check it out below. Now, I'm one of those people who like to match their wallpaper with their case. And with Rhino Shield, things couldn't be easier as there are choices galore. Rhino Shield solid suitcases have evolved to fit the new rounded edges and slightly curved back of the iPhone 15, coming in nine new colors for a total of 16. The clear case, on the other hand, is now 23% thinner and lighter, while still offering the same 11-foot drop protection. It even comes with a five-year warranty against yellowing with a replacement option if that is indeed the case. Pun intended. Of course, with this being Rhino Shield, you have endless customization options. From the cases to the camera rings, the satisfying clicky buttons, colors, and thousands of print designs created in a refined printing process resulting in a design that won't scratch or fade over time. Rhino Shield has a design your own case function on their website where you can upload your photos, use their library of stickers, add texture, and let your imagination run wild. Rhino Shield cases have superior magnetic pull force which you can pair with their new Aqua Stand, a MagSafe compatible water bottle that can be used as a tripod while keeping the beverage cold or hot for eight hours. Rhino Shield's Black Friday sale is here with up to 55% off. Plus, it's Rhino Shield's anniversary, so be sure to check out the first link in the description below to enjoy the best discount yet. Okay, so now that we have the wallpaper installed and everything cleaned up, let's start with the widget page first. So. Hold the finger, plus sign, I'll be looking to create my stats stack and I'll start with the fitness, my activity, very important, and I'll move on to my batteries, to check the status of my devices, then I'll go to sleep, which I've been getting a lot of questions about, and I'll pick the second one, the recent sleep session. Before we, I move on, I'll open the stack and I'll turn which suggestions off and I'll keep the Smart Rotate on as I mentioned earlier. This means that iOS will rotate the widgets based on my behavior, which is actually quite nice. So let's create the next stack, which is the calendar stack. Let's add the month. Oops, there it is. And then on top of it, let's add the current date which I've always liked how it looks like boom stack them on top of each other if they're chasing uh, and then uh, tap on it turn the widget suggestions off and let's move on to my email hey I'll be getting my latest email list drag that underneath followed by tick tick my to do app boom Today's tasks, place that below. And then let's create the listening section, which will be audible. Place that on the bottom and look for YouTube music. Grab that, place it on top of it and look for overcast. There it is. Grab that Again, place it on top of it. And finally, Endel, nice. Now I'll open this one, turn off widget suggestions, and with that, we are absolutely ready with the widget section. So, then look at my stats, look at today's date and information, and then if I want to play something, I just come over here and just tap on whatever I want to listen to. Next up, let's install the MVP, the widget. I'll hold this, tap on the plus sign, and I'll go to Ouija. And then I'll place an empty large widget, number one, right here. Then I'll open my Files app and then I'll look for the widget. Now, if you've purchased the widget and you have it installed on your iPhone, all you have to do is just locate it and just tap on the actual widget. Boom. And it will be imported into Widget. It is as simple as that. Now, once it's imported, I have to assign that widget to the empty number one large slot that we placed here. So I'll go to the manage tab, scroll down. Here it is, large one, tap on it and just assign that widget to live in that area. We don't have a transparent background set yet, which means that all we have to do is come over here, enter jiggle mode, scroll to an empty page and just take a screenshot. And we'll use that screenshot to simulate the empty background. 
go back to Ouija, add wallpaper, boom. Add it again for both light and dark mode, boom. Apply, generating images. The widget will be on the top, which is always the case with large widgets. Confirm. Now before we customize that widget, let's just finish the home page. I will add another widget on top of it. So I'll enter jiggle mode and then I'll look for calculo. There it is. I'll add the large calculator and then the chasing game begins. Oh, <laughs> actually that was easier than before. Okay, so we have the stack, tap on it to turn off widget suggestions and actually I'll turn off smart rotate as well because I want to switch between those by myself. I don't want iOS to, you know, show me the calculator at a random moment. So, boom. Go back. Perfect. Next up, Notion pages. So I have one page for my videos. I'll hold on this, edit widget, and I'll look for videos. Boom. This one is ready. Hold again. Notion. Page. Place it as a stack. Tap on that stack. Turn off suggestions. Hold it. Edit Notion. And that will be my notes page. So. No. Boom. Okay. And then we have Chrome that we need to place on the dock and then of course my settings because I use them a lot and I want to have easy access to them boom like this then we have photos the camera app Lightroom and then all the YouTube apps. So I'll start with YouTube and the studio app. Where'd you go, Cut Night Joe? Okay, let's do the arrangement on the <laughs> empty page. Stack them on top of each other, just do YouTube. Boom. Grab that folder, bring it back. And with that, the home screen is ready. Now, before we do the customization, it is time for shortcuts. Now, the first shortcut is when you hold the action button and you have, you know, this menu of choices that you can uh, choose from. This widget I have showcased in a step-by-step -step video on my newsletter. And I'll link my newsletter here and in the description below if you want to go ahead and check it out there. The shortcut that people have been asking me the most is the file shortcut so let's just create that one i'll open shortcuts i have it right here the way it works is like this if i tap on it i'm presented with a list and i can go to my most used folders desktop this is the wallpapers and my company uh, folder so if i tap on desktop i'll be directed to my desktop if i tap on scan i'll be directed to scan a document so let's create that shortcut. Let's start with the plus sign and look for menu. Choose from menu. And then we'll have, let's say we have two options for the sake of, you know, not wasting a lot of time, actually three options. Let's do my desktop again, done. Next one is my wallpapers folder. And then the final one is scan. Now you can put emojis in the beginning if you want. But with that, the menu is complete. I'll call this shortcut rename. I'll call it menu two because I'm, I already have the initial one created. And now if we test it, let's see, boom, we have a list. Which one? I don't like this uh, string, which one? So let's uh, change that one. So the prompt should be choose. So let's see, choose, nice. Okay, for each of the three menu choices that we have created, we have corresponding 
items below. Underneath each, we need to add the actual automation. So let's start with desktop. The first thing that we're gonna look for is called a file. So there it is, file. Grab that, place it under desktop. And here I'll locate my desktop. So whenever I tap on desktop, I will be grabbing the desktop on my iCloud. That on its own will not work. So we need to add an additional step, which is called open. Open file, grab that, place it underneath the selected destination. So open file in finder. Oh, actually files. Boom. Let's test it out. Menu, desktop, boom. It works. So same thing for wallpaper. And let's test it out. Menu two, wallpapers, boom. Nice. Next up, let's scan a document. This thing was not available in iOS 16. I'm so glad it's here in iOS 17 because I don't have to use a third party app to scan documents. I can just use the files app. So look for scan, scan document. It is as simple as that. Let's test it out. Scan. Oh, come on, scan. Nice. Okay. So with that, the menu shortcut is ready. This one should have been called Finder 2, not Menu 2. So Finder or Files. So it is important to remember what the titles of those shortcuts are because with that exact string, we will integrate them into Widgie. Now that we have all this set up, let's go to Widgie. Now that we have imported the widget, I'll open it and click on edit. And I want to change the files toggle or button instead of opening files to trigger that shortcut. So I'll look for bottom right app. And all I need to do is change the tap action. So I'll open the tap action, open the last tab, and I'll change the external action from files to custom actions run shortcut. And this is where the name comes in. So I'll choose files to set. Go back on the top left to confirm the changes and let's test it out. Boom. I want to go to my desktop. And initially you need to provide access to the folders, which happens, it's totally normal. So let's do files, wallpapers, files, desktop, perfect. Everything works. Now let's tweak the widget a little bit. And the first thing that I want to do is change the style of the clock to match the design on the lock screen, which is this one. So to do that, I'll go to time. And first of all, I'll change the AM PM color. So I'll extend that folder and I'll look for this shape. If you're not sure what you're editing, just try to hide the element and reveal it again to see what you're working with. So I'll change the color of that shape. I'll open it and I'll go to background and I'll do, let's say orange. We do orange, AM now looks orange and it kind of matches better, which is great. And let's go back to the time and go to the text. Actually, we'll go to the clock. And the second tab is the actual text information. So the first item is font system black. Let's change that by clicking edit. And we have something new in Widget and iOS 17 lock screen. So tap on lock screen and you'll see some of the fonts used on the lock screen. So let's do rails. And just like that, we have the same font that we have 
here, which is nice. So probably the last thing that'll change in Ouija is the events colors a little bit to tweak them and match them with the wallpaper. So let's go to events. And the first event has a shape which has a yellowish color. Now let's go to the apple colors and pick something orangey like this. Nice. And then we'll go back to event two, the first shape. And I'll change the color to maybe something like this brown. Go back, check it out. Perfect. So if you have an iPhone 15, not the Pro or an older model, and you want to take advantage of this shortcut, but you don't have the action button, you can do something like this. And trigger it with the means of double tapping on the back. And you can activate this feature very simply. All you have to do is go to settings, then you go to accessibility, touch, and all the way at the bottom, back tap. So you can program either a double tap or triple tap to trigger a shortcut. Another way to level up the iPhone game is to use clever accessories like this Pitaka car charger and mount, which features built-in NFC tags, which I talk more about in my day in the life video with the iPhone 15 Pro here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.